guys, it's Jen and Julian, and you are listening to episode 34 of X Appeal. And I really hope that that enthusiasm was up to Julian's standard. It was. Bravo. Ooh, huh? two days before my birthday. You're on the 19th? Yeah. Nice. Ew. Ew, ew. 38 years old. Hello. Hello, 38. <sighs> Bring it the fuck on. I'm, I'm basically 40. Like, basically 40. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it's true. So in two days, you were... I can say that you can't say that. No, I can. No, you can't. I can. I can. We're 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 well past the little friendship being the niceties. Nice, nice. Like, oh my god, I can't say that. I could say whatever I want to you, Jen. Yeah, and that's right. the beauty of this relationship. No, it's not like you know you know somebody for a couple of years and you can all of a sudden pop off. I I agree. You know what? I think Imagine that would be such a good relationship, like on a human level, when as a man or as a woman, you could say whatever you want to that specific opposite gender. Like, because as guys, we can pretty much say whatever we want to each other. But like being able to tell you, hey, Jen, you look like shit. But it's almost like after a couple of after like a contract, right? Like after a couple of years now, you're in that zone where you can say whatever you want, even if it's offensive. That's it. And, and, And you're not allowed to be offended. Yeah, exactly. That would be that would be fun. That would be fun. Um, you missed my insult to you. Yeah, I don't know. The, I think the the audio just blurted out for some reason. It probably wasn't that good. Okay, that's why. You were one of the, you. You probably had one of those like old persons insult. Like you, 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 you Goomba Bear. Whatever. What? You're such a little Goomba Bear. Whatever. Goomba Bear. I don't what? know, but that's the type of like ins like insults old people use. I don't, I, first of all, I'm not old. Second of all, I'm getting there. Not so, yet, but in two days, you will be. In, 38. Two, in two days, I'll be 38 years old. Yeah. But um, here's, do, I, do I look 38? Do I feel 38? I feel 55. But do I, I look? No, 30? you don't. Thank you so much, Julian. You are welcome. You see, honesty. I'm honest. I'm, I'm giving credit where credit is due. You really missed a good burn there. You missed a great burn. You could have been oh, like, no, you look 38. You look 45. No, that's such an easy one. That was too easy. I'm better than this when it comes to humor. Yeah. It's a little bit more like deep, my humor. This is like too. Anybody could say that. Okay. Okay. Uh, how was your, uh, huh? Talk about Valentine's Day. Yeah, Happy we are. Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you too. I think we've we've already done a podcast last year about Valentine's Day, but like, let's see if we feel differently. What? Let's see if we feel differently than last year. We feel differently about Valentine's Day. I will always feel the same about Valentine's Day. It's not a, it's not a real holiday. No, it's not real. Like it's, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's a way you should show your love every fucking day. Yeah. why, Why pick one, one day, February 14th, to express how much you love somebody. I agree. And if single people feel bad about themselves. So, no, I'm not a huge but, fan, but there's pressure to, to conform and I'm a sheep. So, so I'll do it. I, I, you know. I feel like there's, come on, there's pressure, but I feel like there's more pressure for guys. For sure. If you, if you no. for example, if you Google Valentine's Day gifts, um, you'll find mostly stuff for, for the ladies. Yeah. You can't yourself. You know, so, there's there's two things about this. Uh, first thing is like you know on TikTok, for example, there's a ton of like content being made about Valentine's Day, and there's a ton of those like like crazy gestures that the guy did, where like for example, he went in the bathroom and he wrote, "Will you be my Valentine?" with petals of roses everywhere on the floor and a bath that has been pre-made and all that stuff, and like. You know, the captions are, you know, if he really wants to, he will try. Or, you know, if he's not trying, then he doesn't want to. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, you're, you're, you're fucking me over right now. Like, I'm not about these things. I don't like to, like, it's not that I don't like it. It's just like, I think it's cliche. I'm not, I'm not about this. But then it makes me feel as a guy watching this, like, oh, like as much as I know my girlfriend is not like she hasn't really expressed the that that want to have these type of gestures. 
uh, because she recognized that I do stuff daily, but I automatically feel this little pressure. I was like, oh, fuck. Like if I don't do something that big or so romantic with the flowers, then I'm not doing good enough, you know? And it's just like, it gets on my nerves. I don't like it. And as a guy, the la- the thing that I hate the most is being told what I'm supposed to be doing. It's like, you should do it this way. And this is what TikTok is doing me. And it's making me bitter and bitter, more bitter about... Um, TikTok's a very bitter place. Um, but I every year, I always try <laughs> to have an agreement with my partner uh, where we don't do stuff for Valentine's Day. Or like we we just do something like a nice dinner. Mm. Nothing crazy, no crazy surprises. Like just just don't. I, I don't need it. And, yeah, and I feel like you say that, but then if and again, I'm sure you mean it. But I, as guys I'm, now, we feel like, oh no, but she says she, she doesn't want anything. And then everybody you TikTok and Instagram and everything around us telling you, yeah, she said that, but she doesn't mean it. You have to do something. That's the toxicity of social media because isn't social media just a, a world where everybody kind of lives in this fantasy world where, you know, they what they put out is not what reality is? That's what social media is. So, so no, don't pay attention to what you see on fucking Instagram or TikTok. Like, do what means something to you and to your girlfriend. And if it's nothing, if it's just like something that's, you know, that money can't buy if you cook or something – or whatever, just tell her how much you love her, then, or, or if you've used that word yet, mm-hmm. um, or if you've used that word yet, mm-hmm. or if you've used that word yet. Yeah, we've used it, Jen. Ah, 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 cute, 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 cute. Good for you. Good for you. Like, yeah. Let's, let's, love. Yeah. let's um, <laughs> it's Valentine's Day. You know, this shit makes me so uncomfortable. I know it does, which is why I keep prying. Yeah. Um, no, but it's, it's like, I'm always like, it's a thought that counts person. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, how, how big the, the gesture is. If you just, if you just write me something nice, like that's great. But I do agree. There's so much unnecessary pressure on Valentine's day, which is why I hate it. It also falls around my birthday. So, you know, there's like extra pressure now yeah. for Jared to like do something specific for Valentine's day and then do something special, um, for, <laughs> for my birthday. Can I tell you? Cause he's not, he's not here right now. Mm. Um, can I tell you what I got him? Yeah. The Oculus. <laughs> Ooh, that's dope. Isn't it? Isn't it's it? Great. So, we we took a we took a weekend in wine country yeah. and his we went with another couple and uh and they brought out their Oculus to show Jared and he couldn't stop playing with it. Like he yeah. just he, like for a full maybe like two hours, he was just like playing with it. And I'm like, I gotta get this for him. And he said, You better not get me that for for any like for Valentine's Day or anything. He said, because I want to wait until the technology improves. And I'm like, that's gonna be years. Like mm enjoy this now like escape <laughs> yeah escape reality fucking escape from reality for a couple of hours you know you know you can watch porn in uh i've watched porn on uh, oculus well that was a big mistake um, yeah so it's like basically obviously it's not your own penis that you see but it's like you look down and you see the girl coming up close and you're just basically seeing it from the uh the porn actor's point of view and then you look left and see the- huh really yeah. No, you're joking. You're joking. No, 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 absolutely. There's porn for Oculus. There's, there's VR porn. Yeah, virtual reality. Yeah. Oh no. No, like, no but like here's here's listen. Here's what you can do. Have him put the no. Oculus on, and he can watch porn while he has sex with you. So he feels like he's having sex with no. a completely different women. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very. I'm legit. Very upset right now. I'm very upset with myself right now. Um, but that's no, but like that way, look, it's like, it's like he's cheating without cheating. Like Warcraft games and shit. Like I didn't know that he was going to be having sex, virtual sex with other women. Well, yeah, but he can use you as the real one. Isn't that romantic? <laughs> I am pissed. No, but there definitely is the Warcraft stuff. And there's a ton of like cool revolver games where you have to shoot and stuff. Huh? You have the Oculus. No, no, my buddy has it. 
So my first instincts, before I tried it on, I I did the boxing one, which was cool. And right after, I was like, wait, hold on. Is there porn on this? And my mom was like, yeah, of course there is. I was like, okay. Of course there is. What do you mean, of course there is? Like, no, no, not of course there is. Why does does porn have to infect every aspect of our our society? (laughs) But, hey, you see how you just said, like, you don't want to celebrate it, but you already bought him a gift. So now if he doesn't give you anything, he's going to feel like a goddamn moron. No, um, he already said he was doing something and I, I encouraged him not to, but yeah, but you encourage him not to, and then you do something. So if you didn't, I'm a generous human being because I'm a good person who, who got her boyfriend's virtual porn for Valentine's day. So in the event, because we are recording this like a few days before Valentine's day. So you haven't seen the reaction, but like in the event that, he you get him the oculus as a gift and he doesn't get you anything but takes you out to dinner would you feel satisfied honestly yes yes what if he just gives you a little piece of paper saying how much he loves you and that's it that's great there's there's no way there is way yes there is way julian because i we have a child now and save your fucking money save your money yeah I understand. I agree. I agree with you. I just, I'm having a hard time buying it. I think like we, I feel like we're just getting tricked all the time. I can use the Oculus. I can go and I can go and, and fight zombies in the walking dead. Like I like doing that stuff. You do? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to do anything. You get a good workout in, by the way. Like you could probably use it as like a, like some people are drenched using it. I see. There's like a multitude of things that you can do. Yeah. I didn't do this. Yeah, yeah. One of them is watching porn. This podcast is sponsored by Oculus. Just kidding. That would be nice. Oculus have that money. Yep. Um, all right. But, so as a Valentine's treat for our audience, we're going to be doing nothing but answering questions from the audience. Yeah, hold on. Because I just realized I sounded super bitter about it. So I just want to let people know I'm not bitter about Valentine's Day. I think it's a cool thing. I just don't like the pressure and social media be telling me what I'm supposed to do to look good. However, the disclaimer is my girlfriend's not making me feel this way. I'm just saying as a gem. Right. So just like But we all know that you're a bitter Frenchman. That's why we love you. That's why we know you and we it's love you. I'm, it's not that I'm bitter, but I do feel like I'm not I'm not the best at doing stuff just because we're told we're supposed to do them. Okay. So it's just like, I like to question stuff. I like to be like, okay, we're supposed to do this. Why? Right. It's, it's the same thing with the whole, marriage. yeah. Or like the, the whole like kids before marriage and, and, and marriage after kids or whatever, all that stuff. Like nothing wrong with questioning I, forms. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like I come off as somebody who's against it. I'm not, I'm just like, why though? Like, why yeah. can't I do it that way and have it being as good as? But when it comes to Valentine's Day, the way I see it is just a rem- it's like a nice, it's just a planned date. So I feel like sometimes in a relationship, you kind of get lost into your routine. And it's important to be like, no, on this, like, let's go out. Let's go have a dinner. Just you and I have some drinks, right? So we did that. Like, um, she, she got a new job. So we went and celebrate. And listen, I haven't been drinking at all like i barely drink anymore i like smoke weed on sundays that's kind of my own way to relax now and i love it but well on a thursday we went out we had a good dinner and we had a few drinks and well the next day i was hurting because i hadn't had more than two tequilas in my in like the last year so i had like four uh but it was good it was fun so i think i take valentine's day as this as a kind of a reminder and it says okay we're taking this time just to go on a date together to do something together a cool activity which brings us closer and kind of reminds us why we're together the whole like will you be my valentine and writing on the walls and a rose bed of petals and the whole thing to me that doesn't do anything it feels like it's more of a it's more of something it's a little too cliche but a nice dinner and a cool gesture like getting your partner that little thing that they've been wanted just as like a little wink or something. I think that's great. Yeah. But it can also be done on, on fucking May 2nd, you know, show them you love them in your own way. Don't worry about what TikTok or Instagram tells you to do. Yeah. But anyways, I just want to clear that up. Um, yeah. Questions today. We're doing questions of the audience. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Are you excited? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. 
I, I know I read one that was for me about like orgasms and stuff. But we'll start with the first one. Okay, so Mary Lynn says, hey, Jen and Julian, question for you both. If you're living at home in your 20s and dating, what's your best advice for when it's okay to bring someone home to meet the parents? It Ooh, has God. to happen eventually since you don't have your own place. Okay, so living at home in your 20s, this is, this is more and more common uh, for people who go to college, come home, and live with their parents until they maybe can save up enough money to get a place yeah. of their own. No, no shame in that game. Um, Hold on. Little- are, are she, I'm confused. Yeah. Is she talking about bringing someone home that you've been dating or bringing someone home you met at the bar to like have some fun? I think bring, no, I think bringing somebody home to, no, to meet the parents, like meaning in a dating situation. Well, well, so then it's just the same as if you've been not living with them. It's basic. Yeah. Okay. So if you're living with somebody that it's inevitable, like you're going to, you what what are you going to do? Bring them home, stash them in the basement. (laughs) You know, like you have to, at some point you're going to run into the parents. So if you're living with your parents, I don't know if that's something that can be planned. I mean, maybe you bring them home on occasions when you know that your parents aren't going to be around. Uh, it also kind of depends on how invested your parents get in the person you're dating. I mean, yeah. if they want to be part of your dating life, like my parents were never that way. Like my parents always wanted to be kept in the dark about that stuff. Yeah. Um, there's you also, by meeting the parents, you run the risk of them getting invested and asking a lot of questions and following that person on social media and texting that person and Anything else that can that can come up? That's happened before. By the way. To you for some reason. Yes, it has. Okay. Uh, so, but how, just, what does that have anything to do with living at home? <sighs> like to me, if if you're living at home or you're living on your own, you're the time where you introduce that partner to your parents is the same. It doesn't no, change. It's it. No, it's not. Why? Because your parents, because your parents live there too. Yeah, They're we like, go to. Uh, Okay, so but you go to their place, I guess. I mean, that's that's one way of like prolonging the inevitable, I think. But if you ever want, you know, the person to see where you live, uh, yeah, you're going to run the risk of running into your parents, and then you have to, yes, make the introduction. Uh, it might not be anything serious. That's when you have a conversation with your parents afterward. By yeah. the way, and you say, "Hey, listen, this is a guy that I met uh, on on J date." Like. <laughs> You know, like a few weeks ago, mm. nothing serious. You just have to set the tone with your parents because depending on what kind of person they are, they might get invested. So what do you say? Say, hey, I've only been dating this guy for like three weeks, but I really need to get late tonight. Mom and dad, can you mind if I bring him home? Like really? how are you supposed to do that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, no. That? No. Well, no, no, but like. You don't No, You don't ever have to. What, you don't just be like how you were in, in high school, right? And like get it's handsy in your, in your in your finished basement. Like I don't know. Watch some. Watch. First of all, I think it. Dif- unfortunately, I think it's different whether we are a guy or a girl. Marilyn sounds like she is a woman, but for example, I know that me as a guy growing up, I never had the same treatment as my sister growing up. So I was allowed to bring a girl that I've been casually singing home, seeing home, but my sister was not allowed to bring anybody unless they were serious boyfriend and girlfriend. That's a double standard if I ever heard that of is. That is a very big double standard, but that's very common in more Middle Eastern-ish, um, you know, upbringing. I agree it's a huge double standards, but, um, and it's very unfair. Is that but, because the way you, you, the Middle Eastern cultures look at women? I don't know. I mean, again, I say that, but like, we're not Middle Eastern. We're French yeah. with, you know, a sprin- sprinkle of Iranian. But, <laughs> so but my dad your- is just, my dad is just old school. I think when it comes to that. That's real old school. Yeah. If I were your sister, no, no. I'd, be, I'd be fucking pissed. I would be pissed. Yeah, she is. Oh, sister. she is pissed. She was, she was super pissed. She was, especially when we were in the 20s. And like we're on vacation. And if I brought someone I met at the bar, then I was fine with my dad. 
But if my my sister does it, that was like she'd be sent home right away back to France. Does your dad understand that like if you have rules like that, then the girl's gonna your sister's gonna go over to the guy's place, mm -hmm. which is yeah. a more dangerous situation. Yeah, but my dad's like his house, his rules, not in his home. Whew. He's like, you are not fucking his daughter in his own home. That's pretty much how um, it's how it's um. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But then if she's been with somebody serious, then he comes on vacation with us and there's no issue. It's just like the one night stand. That's not happening. Yeah. You know. Okay. Um, yeah, but like, yeah, that. when you meet the, the, the parents, I think also it depends how, what, what's your relationship with your parents? Do you have strict parents? Are they religious? Are they kind of cool? Are they like fun, easygoing parents? It's like, oh, we know where you, you know, like if you have parents that are like super no, uh, going open, then that's great. You could probably bring someone home saying, hey, I've ju we've just been dating. And then they'll be like, all right, cool. You guys, you guys have fun. The parents should also kind of know like, okay, you're a girl in your 20s. Like you're going to get laid. You're going to want to get laid. It's okay. You know, what's the, uh, I've, I've never been in that situation before. So I don't really know. I mean, I would only bring guys home to meet my parents if I thought, that it was relatively serious. Um, yeah, actually, um, that's so funny. So it's a separate, like, it's not about bringing home, but I... Uh, yeah, it's like you're introducing <laughs> the guy to your roommates, basically. Yeah, basically. Um, I had a situation like that happen to me where a few years ago, I was dating someone and we were dating for like maybe two months. And while we're dating, my mom ended up coming to LA to see me, right? And so when my mom is in LA to see me, I spend pretty much my 10 days, two weeks till she's here, I spend it with her. So we're with her, she stays over. Uh, we've, we're with her, like I'm with her all day. And then if I go have brunch with my boys, she comes along. I was, she doesn't understand anything because she doesn't very speak very well English, but I bring her everywhere. We go all day together. And then the only time I'm not with her is when I'm working. Yeah. Um, but there's going to be, she's there for two weeks. So there was going to be a period of time for those two weeks where I told the girl, I was like, you know, I'm not going to be able to uh, hang out with you because I'll be with my mom. And, and then one day um, she texts me and I, I didn't really say it like this. I didn't say I'm not going to be able to see you, but I mean, my mom's going to be here. And then she texts me and she's like, what are you guys, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I'm at this place with my mom. Come. Like, come by, come, come grab a coffee. Cause in my mind, I'm like, I still want to see you. And that's a way for us to hang out. And my mom's going to have to be here. So we have to, I didn't think anything about it. Like to me, it was just like, yeah, come, come. I'll be here with my mom. Like, just come say hi, hang out with us for a little bit. And then, you know, girls thinking, right. The girls thinking like, Oh my God, we've reached yep. this little mark in our relationship. Like, yep. And then basically she got, she got confused because I guess she was confused. She told one of her girlfriends, I'm so confused because Julian, Julian and I are still very casual and it, it, we're still acting like we're very casual, but I, I just met his mom. I feel like that's not a casual thing. Um, and then like, we're not boyfriend and girlfriend yet, but I just met his mom. I feel like we should have a conversation if we're going to be boyfriend and girlfriend. In my mind, I was just like, yo, my mom's here. We're chilling. She's going to go back to France. Uh, you want to come by, grab a coffee and hang out with me? You're welcome to. My my clueless ass like was oh, just like in her head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she yeah. was so in her head about it, and she was like, "Oh shit, it's a big thing." Um, yeah. To me, I don't necessarily see it that way, just because at the end of the day, I think, and it goes both ways. Even for me, I feel like if you're a good person, whether we are together, we're not together, whether it's just a fling, whether this, you're still a good person. Like, I don't mind introducing my mom to good person. She's a good person too. I'm just too good person introduced talking to each other, right? right. You know, if it doesn't work out, I wouldn't regret it. I won't regret being like, oh my God. So yeah, she was cool. It just didn't work out. Uh, but it's true that there's a there's a huge, like, I think for women, it's different, I guess. When as your girl, you're meeting your your current partner or whatever's, or whoever you're dating's mom. Like, I know there's a big thing, right? Daughter, daughter-in-law, mom. It can be. I mean, like I've met, I've met parents fairly soon and things yeah. have worked out and it's, it hasn't been a big deal. Like I don't really care about that stuff. Like I kind of look at it as this is an extension of who you are, part of the family. Great. Um, I know that I'm more than likely not being vetted for marriage. <laughs> yeah. You know, 
meeting the the parents. It's okay. Um, you know, and well, I'll give you an example. So there was a, a guy that I basically went on. I had been communicating with, went over to his place, um, for the f- first time and he brought his mom over to visit and his kid. And it was like, not a big deal. Um, and things didn't work out obviously, but like it, it wasn't a big deal for me. It wasn't really a big deal for the mom. It wasn't a big deal for him. So that that's, I would have waited at least like the third date. Like that's first date like that. That's a, that's a lot. I think that's a little too much. Yeah. It was a lot. Uh, I I don't know. I mean, he was older, so maybe he look, looks at life differently. Yeah, he was maybe, he, but I agree in a, in a way that's like I feel like some people tend to wait too long, like six, seven, eight months, a year before meeting the parents. But when you really think about it, like your parents, if they live around, of course, they're they're so like they're part of who you are, right? They brought you. So I think like as a partner, getting to know who raised them and who's around them and the family values kind of also helps you knowing if you want to go deeper with that person. That's what happened with me and Jared. Like I, you know, I, I finally realized that he was the, the person I wanted to be with long term when I met his, his mom and dad and when his mom sat me down and like went through old photo albums. Oh yeah myself like my mom does the same thing she's she you know has these physical photo albums that like i would come home and like go through and it was just nice and fun and and it told me that he was raised in a very similar way to me so that commonality made me you know love him even more yeah no no for but, sure yeah so 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 that was a big statement like he he brought me home for Thanksgiving which was like a big gesture like that's like a I'm going to introduce you to my family now like this is a a different step in our relationship but you know I've been in many different situations so I don't really read too much into it I think it just kind of depends on like how you set the scene if yeah. that makes sense you well, know I would set it as the least um the the least big deal as possible. Like if you don't, if you don't look casual. at it, yeah, you know, yeah. no, but even if it's a big thing, I would still try to set it up in a very casual way so that my partner doesn't feel any type of pressure. So that it's kind of like, Oh, yeah. you know, expectation. And it's just like, um, but like, imagine, you know, you've been dating someone for like t- three months and then you meet their parents and like, whatever their dad is like a, some, little piece of shit like that actually make you say like oh yeah you know what i don't know if i want to be in a relationship with this person yeah the, the, you the family have to deal with this no i don't want to deal with this yep, yep. so so yep. i guess yeah i guess there's like a sweet spot i guess it's yep. a sweet spot if you're living at your at home with your parents i'd say honestly i'd say about if you've been ca- like dating fairly actively with this person and hanging out a lot i would say about a month and a half two months you could probably start like introducing like slowly by little vignettes it just depends on how big of a deal that gesture is to each party. Like how big of a deal it is to yeah. the person you're dating, how big of a deal is it to the family? And if you can come to some sort of like everybody's on the same page, then yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about introducing him to your to your parents. Um because yeah. they're an extension of who you are. And yeah. parents, and it's okay. I do feel that it's a bit of a bigger deal for women in general to meet the man's parents than it is the opposite than for a guy to meet the, 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 the daughter's parents. I think. Um, I don't think so. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, I I've dated guys who think it's a very big deal for me to be introducing them to the, to the family. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's, it's, based on men or women, because the insinuation that you're making is that women are like way more emotionally involved in a relationship than men are. And that's not true. Men that's can be. Well, what, what, why do you think that then? Um, I, f- I feel like just generally speaking, women put more pressure on themselves about meeting the parents and guys. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. I think, I think that, it's easier for like as a guy, usually we fear the dad. 
right? And I think it's easier from, for two men to find something to bond about, right? Even if you're meeting your girlfriend's dad, like you can have a small conversation and it's all about the dad just want to know, like, are you a good human? Are you a good yeah. person? Yeah. But I feel like as for a woman, meaning the mom, generally speaking, mom wants to know more about, are you a good woman? It's like, are you going to be good to my son? It's more personal. Mm. So I have a feeling that the mom relationship to protective, how protective they are about their son makes it harder for a woman when she gets introduced because it's like, it's a, you're, you're, you're facing the mom. And I think that generally speaking, and again, it's a very big generalization. The mom might be super chill, but she's a, might be a little bit like, are oh, you right for my son? Whereas the dad is just like, you're a good person. You seem like you have good values. Cool. You could be with my daughter in a way. And it's very generalized and very simple in the way I'm saying it. It's not necessarily like that, but I just feel like maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But I don't know. I think that there are some there are some men out there who are very hawkish about, you know, how their daughters, who their daughters are bringing home and are they worthy and are they going to, is she going to be in good hands? Yeah, I of think course. A real concern there with with men. Look at what your dad did, you know, to your sister. Like you're not bringing you're not bringing home any any guys to this house. Yeah, like, no. But my man, my dad was just like, my dad was just you're not bringing home any guys. You're just bringing your boyfriend. And then if he thought that guy was like a little piece of shit, he wouldn't say anything. He would still yeah. be allowed. It was just you're not allowed to bring a one night stand home. Yeah, I don't know how uh, how I'm gonna handle things when little Ethan um, starts dating. I feel like it's it's oh, tough. Because I don't know if any woman's gonna ever be good enough or man. Whatever you decide. Yeah. Whatever pickles your pickle. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be a concern. You raise the I I you know I'm raising him like raising him to be a good boy, and I want someone to be good to him. Yeah, of course. It breaks my heart to think that he's going to be heartbroken in this world, but it's going to happen. It will. Best thing you can do is teach your kids how to cope with life. Um, all right. Next question. Okay. So Julian Q said, do women, do most, do women fake most orgasms? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to think not, but I'm sure, I'm sure I've been faked on for sure. Yeah. Um, I would say most men have been faked on. Yeah. Most I don't understand this. I'm so good at constructive criticism. It's like, it's like hey, did you come? No. I'm not going to be like, oh, my God. I suck. I'll be like, oh, really? Like, what do you need? It's not It's not like, also, also we know. Like, I know that as a man, no, no. Listen, <laughs> listen to me. As a man, if you touch my penis the right way, I will come. It's just okay. about friction. You touch it the right way, something will happen. As a woman, it's you're not all that like you have more involved in your in your orgasm. You have to be in the right state of mind. You have to actually like the person. You have to this thing needs to be done right. Maybe you like it more to the left versus the previous girl likes it more to the right. It's more different. There's yeah. like this comedian that said uh, he had this whole bit about women versus uh, men's orgasm, and he said like once you know how to give one man a blowjob, guess what? You graduated. That's it. You know how to give every man a blowjob. Which is kind of true. I mean, some of them yeah. might want a little finger snuck somewhere, but that's Whatever. not. It's like that it comes down to tweaking. But, uh, you know, in general, yeah, you guys are much easier to please. It's I was physical say. for us. It's like an actual touch. Yeah. It's like you're touching that part and it feels good. Yeah. So it, it doesn't have as much to do with the up here. And I no. think for women, a lot of it is up here. A lot of it is up there. Um, yeah. I mean... Yes, I, I have. Yes, <laughs> you faked. Have you faked? Yes, yes, yes. Why? Yes. So tell me why. Sometimes for for varying reasons. Like sometimes I'm literally tired and I just want to go to bed and mm -hmm. uh, don't want to do this anymore. Uh, other reasons I don't want to. He's trying real hard, and I know that I'm not going to get there because I'm up here, mm -hmm. and and I do it. It's like a compassionate. Oh fake, God! Fake out, yeah. Oh, so I, God. I that's just, the like, worst. I, and I'm really good at it. Like, <laughs> really good at it. Mm. Um, I don't think anybody would be able to tell. So, I mean, physically, we kind of 
can. I mean, when there's an orgasm, it the downstairs it changes. What it tightens up. It tightens up. It doesn't, and then it gets way more wet, and then it's like there's a bunch of shit that happened. If it tightens up, we can do that too. Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Kegels, sure. Yeah, exactly. There's, a, there's no, there's ways of. I mean, yeah, of course. But why not just tell the man, like, hey? Because I'm- you're you're in the risk of. I I think that wh- there is no more vulnerable place that you're in than when you're naked together. Like there is, you're you're never more vulnerable. So, if the man, especially if the man's trying to please you. And you know that you're not going to get there. And it, it, it's not his fault. It's all up here. Yeah. Even if you explain that to him, I really don't think it's going to resonate. I really think he's just going to be hurt. And it's a pride <sighs> thing. I, yeah, I think I, it's a pride I thing. I guess I'm a different breed. I guess I'm a different breed because I'm, I, I know. Like, if, if you're my partner and I made you come like two days ago and tonight you can't for God knows what reason, I'm not going to take it personal. I'm going to try everything I can, but I know that I'm capable of making you come. I know that that has happened. And for any reason, it's not happening for you tonight. Great. I would much rather my partner says, this feels amazing. I can't get myself there, but I'm having a fun time. Do your thing, right? Like, I'm. please don't do your thing. Like, you, you could It'd be in any way hurt or offended by no. any of that. No, in a way, after I've tr- obviously, if I, if you know, if it happens all the time, I, I would like start questioning it, and I would be more about let's try to figure this out together. Let's try to figure out why it's not happening for you. Has it happened before with other partners? What's about me that's not happening? I think we're more in this together. Um, but like, if I've tried for twenty minutes and it's not happening, and the girl's still having a good time, it's not happening, and she goes like, "Do your thing," I'd be like, "All right." Fuck it. It's Julian's turn. And then I'll have my own fun. And then I'll be like, whatever, we'll, we'll catch it next time. Yeah. I mean, that's I, I OK. I mean, that's great. And maybe this is a conversation that more partners should have together, because if everyone's like how you are, um, then what's the fear? And just saying, hey, because it, once you start faking orgasms like on a regular basis with somebody, that's dangerous territory. Yeah. It's, it, and sometimes it is just easier to call it a night and and fake it out and and that's it um i think it's disrespectful i, th- I think listen if you're on a white night stand yeah. and you you're some rent huh yeah go ahead go ahead if you're on a one night stand and and it's just some random person you're never gonna see again and you just want to have them leave like they've done a good job great sure okay fake oh. it but if you're dating someone and you're actually like actively in a physical relationship you shouldn't do that i think that's just disrespectful oh. towards oh. your oh. other partner any better like how are they gonna learn um, if, especially if it's something that that they're not doing to get you there, how yeah. are they going to ever get better or give you what what you might need? Yeah, get, exactly. You know, yeah. so it's, it's counterproductive. And uh, it's it's this also. I feel like there's nothing that turns a girl off more probably than a guy who's actively trying to make you come. Like in a sense of like, oh, it's not happening. It's not happening. What if I do this, babe? What if I do this? Now you're so much in your head about coming and try to make sure that you come so that your boyfriend feels happy. You're not going to come. You have to be in the moment. Exactly it. That's exactly it. Because again, it's like for for women, for a lot of women, maybe maybe I am just speaking for me. I don't know um, because I'm not other women. But for me, it's like a, it's a big head game. Like I need to be in the right. I need to be relaxed enough. Like, uh, and it's almost, it's, it's extremely difficult. Like the stars have to align almost, you know, like you have to be, I have to really be in the mood. Um, I have to like not be that stressed out about something or thinking about something. Um, I have to s- completely switch off from being from like mom mode now, yeah. uh, to, to get in that headspace. And, uh, Jared doesn't believe me when I say this, but a lot of times, like, I don't even need uh, to have an orgasm to be. Yeah, happy. yeah, that's a weird concept for us. That's a very yeah, weird concept. I know it is. It's like, it, it was yeah. great, baby. It was great. I had such a good time. It felt amazing. And we just, yeah, but you didn't come. Yeah, but it felt great. Yeah. So uh, that's something I'm getting used to, too. I'm like, okay, well. Well, it's also like, you know, some women are all about the intimacy of, of having yeah. sex. I know personally, and this is not something that I go around broadcasting, but, but, this is a sex, you know, discussion. Um, I 
And I don't know if I'm one of those rare birds who this doesn't happen to, but I cannot orgasm strictly through sex. Like it, it, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. So I, I have to, tickle. something else has to be happening at the same time. Like, like a tickle, a little tickling. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Well, um, you invest, do you guys use vibrators when you have sex? Yeah. yeah. That's the best. You do you use your vibrators or he uses it on you. You use it while he does uh-huh. thing. It's perfect. Everybody's happy. That's like the best. It's so yeah. fun. Yeah. So he feels like he's contributing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very difficult. Imagine that. I mean, like imagine like you having sex with your girlfriend you can or your wife and you can never, you can never please her like that just through intercourse. Like you, it all um, really- no, but again, I think I'm a different breed. I think I'm just too comfortable with who I am because I'm, I don't take that personally. I'm aware. Like if we got to bring in a vibrator every time, I'm totally cool with it. And actually I think it's fun and I would love for you to show me how to do it so I can do it to you. And right. I would, if you want to do it to yourself while I'm watching, that's great. If you want to do it to yourself while I'm we're in penetration. That's great. Like I'm so about like, yeah, whatever works for you. It's fine. I just don't want to be lied to. To me, yeah. it's like we're in this together. I don't want you to lie about it. And like, if you don't come today, that's cool. I think what's not cool is if as a guy, you don't try. If you don't give a fuck about your partner's yeah, that's uh, awesome. orgasm, that's terrible. But if you've tried, you've put the effort and she knows it and it's just not happening. Move on. It don't yeah. let, just say, all right cool Look, great let's finish this and let's watch a movie we'll try again another time with no okay. pressure and if it's happened before you know that you're capable yeah. of oh, that's so much of giving your girlfriend an orgasm like okay um, i feel like guys experience somewhat of the same thing not with orgasm but like sometimes we're harder than other times it doesn't mean anything it's not because like, this time we're not as hard as we're just not turned on it's just like whatever the last thing that i want to say um is is uh you know, like uh, we're we're he's trying to trying to get me to have an orgasm, and I just turn to him and say, "You know, I'm really tired. <laughs> like, I just want to go to bed." To me, that's just like quintessentially like the the sign of a decaying <laughs> relationship. Um, you know, like, I I mean, sure. Words like I'm really tired. Do you care? I'm just really tired. I just want to go to bed. Like, I'm so worried that he's going to be like, oh, fuck, you know? Well, there's two things to that. Like, he's going to feel neutered or something. Yeah. Well, there's two things to that. First, there's the way you're wording it. If yeah. if he's missed stroke and you're like, hey, I'm really tired. Yeah, that's not necessarily the best way to bring it up, you know? I would there's, never say that mid stroke. No, I would never. way to possibly uh, worth that. What I think the other thing is, were you tired before starting? Usually, yeah. So yeah. then, so then, don't, 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 uh, don't, don't start. And then you, but what do you mean, don't start? Then you reject them. Then it's like it's not a rejection. It's just like, listen, like I've been in situations with my current girlfriend where I like it's midnight and for some reason I'm so tired and we hadn't had sex today. And I know I'm not going to give the performance that I, that I want to because I'm, I'm tired and that happens. We're getting older. We get tired. So I'd rather just like, not even, I'd rather not engage in this and wait till the morning till I'm refreshed and I'm regenerated and my penis is riding up and then we can give something good. I think that saying no to mediocre or to not 100% of the sex is actually better than just doing it. Or you let him know and be like, listen, I want you, but I'm so tired. I don't think I'll be able to come. But if you want to do your thing, I love that. Do your thing, babe. You know, that's also there's. Yeah, but no, but that's the thing. Some guys like that. Like I'll get into these fantasies where it's like, oh, this sex session is just for me. That's in a way very generous of you, in my opinion, to say tell you jared does not like that he does not like that he is a very generous person and like he's 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 not gonna have a good time if if he doesn't think that i'm having a good time all right so then here's my suggestion don't go don't do it and then the next time in the morning or whenever you have to initiate it just to kind of repair it so in the sense of like don't turn him down but like maybe just be like i'm so tired baby i promise like another time or like tomorrow, but then don't have him initiate again. Just like that's you to you initiating it will be the way to make it better. The fact that you yeah. said no last night, because now he doesn't feel rejected. He's like, okay, she was tired, but she's still like, if he's constantly trying, then that's not going to be an issue. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. Agreed. You Agreed. know, uh, all this is say, do women fake orgasms? I guess some of them do and some of them don't do it for good reason. We have our reasons. I don't think that's a thing. And actually, I know you said something about like you, you need a lot going on in your mind to be at the right spot. I, I know that I have been with, there's one partner in particular that I can think of who there was one position, 30 second in that position, it would happen. Like this yeah. one specific position that works every goddamn time within a minute. And it's just like, boom, boom. huh? Through sex? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. What are you talking about? Sex. Yeah. So that was the, that, that's the, that's the, that was the, um, the, uh, the example of somebody who is also about the physical kind of more of a man thing where it's like, it feels good this way. And it feels good this way for X amount of time. This will happen. Yeah. Where there's less uh, brain involved. I think it's the way my body's shaped. Maybe. I mean, you, you're, you're, you're a heady person. I am. You overthink a lot of shit. So that makes sense. I know. I know. We know this. Um, Okay. Next question and last question. This is from Liv. Uh, Here's my my question. This looks like it's directed toward me, but I don't don't know. Um, I think that both of us need to be answering this because this is a really good question. Uh, Do you believe in letting your ex know how he hurt and or disrespected you? Do you think it could make him take a look in the mirror, self-reflect on who he is as a person? Could be in the form of a letter. I love that question because it's something that I've like wrestled with many, many times um, yeah. throughout my life. Uh, like, do you let the person who hurt you know that they hurt you? Or do you just, you know, call it a wash or whatever and and move on? And I... I I've all like I've had people hurt me deeply in relationships and I've let them know they've hurt me deeply during the relationship, but it doesn't seem to matter. Um, so if it doesn't matter when you're in the relationship, is it going to matter after the relationship? I doubt it. Matter to who? To the other person who, who hurt you. Who gives a fuck? What do you mean? I think at this stage, it's all about you. If somebody hurt you and you telling them that they hurt you and how it affected you is vulnerable, yes, but it's powerful towards you. You got to do it in a way. I'm just letting you know how you fuck me up about this and this and this. And that's basically you standing up for yourself. Whether they care or not is out of the equation. I believe if somebody did this, it's about you. It's about you making amends with yourself, standing up for yourself so you can move on. You'll ne- I don't think you can physic I can't I don't think you can mentally move on unless yeah. you you have put this in the past. And the way to put this in the past is you letting them know they fucked you up and that's you standing for yourself so you can be proud about yourself. It's like I don't care if you don't care. You know what? I told you what I had to say and I'll go fuck off. Yeah, because who are you doing this for? I mean, like are you doing this for, for the you? next person, for the next person that they that they find themselves in a relationship yeah. with? But that's, that's the question. I mean, like, you know, do you think that, do you really, is there a reasonable expectation that once you let the, your ex know that they hurt you that bad, that, that person's going to take a look in the mirror and be like, Oh, you know what? I've really, I really have some things that I got to work on. I don't think that's going to happen. No, uh, really? I mean, it can, but I think the issue with this question <laughs> is that, is that she wants to know if she can do it because her intention of her doing it is, um, to live, I guess it's a woman. Um, her intention of doing it is to make him reflect on his actions. I and think your intention is wrong. I agree. You have to do it you, for yourself. You have to do it for yourself. Yeah. And this person, whether what happens, it's fine. You'll feel so much, so proud of yourself for just standing up after, because especially if they hurt you, that means you didn't stand up during the relationship. So you let somebody walk all over you. So now this is your way to gain your, a little bit of your power back. Two, closure. It's also very important yeah. to have your say and let them know how their actions directly impacted you. And whether you, and sometimes I've done this too. Like I've typed exactly how I feel out in like the notes, you know, part of like the app or whatever on my phone. And I never send it, but it's good to just put those thoughts down and be able to read through them. Even if you never yeah, send it. It depends. I mean, again, if, 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 
whatever whatever helps you to heal and to move on like some people might might get fucked over and be like eh, you know what i the way i deal with things is i'm better off not thinking about it and never talking to this person again and focusing on the future great but if you feel like you're still hurting from something then i would encourage that person to actually just like stand up for themselves and just say yeah. something and then who cares if he or she looks in the mirror, if it makes them reflect or if they start to reach out, send your stuff and then move on with your life. I think that there's a timetable on that. So would it be better to send it in the moment or to sit on it and send it maybe like months or weeks down the road? I think, um, I think sometimes it's good in the moment and sometimes when you've like taken a few months because sometimes it takes a while to realize it that you've been hurt like you mm -hmm. know it, it's not immediate so obviously if if it's somebody you've dated 10 years ago and and now you're suddenly sending a text out of loose saying hey by the way i just want to let you know that that thing you did back in 1996 was kind of fucked up and it made me feel this way uh that's a little you know, that, yeah. that, that, that might be a little too old, but, um, you know, I, I, and whenever you do that, I think it's important to just make sure the other person know you're not trying to get a rise out of them. It's just like, listen, I have to, I'm telling you this for myself because I need to, you know, stand up for myself, but that thing was really not cool. This is how I took it, blah, blah. I don't need an answer from you. Just thought you should know. Boom. Yeah. Um, as terms of the time, I don't know. I mean, I think they're all valid. I mean, it's, it's, it's also, I think it just, yeah, it depends on what you need because I've gone back and forth. Like, do I let the, the guy that I lived with for two years in New York, like, and, and we had a horrible ending. Like, do I let him know how badly he hurt me and what the, what the impact has been? Well, is it preventing you from moving forward? I mean, it's definitely caused me some setbacks in relationships. Yeah, like it's, I, I definitely feel like people I've been with since him have paid for his mistakes. Mm -hmm. So then that might be interesting to look into it. I don't want to give him the satisfaction of knowing that. Like that, that he's, you know, so to speak, um, ruined me uh, from other relationships or or had that kind of profound impact um so that's that's a really that's a good and a, that's a difficult question to answer i think it, it just comes down to how is it going to make that's, you feel yeah that's the thing because it's you don't want to give him the satisfaction that's your ego talking and your yeah. ego is just getting in the way of you healing so it's like that person who cares like the way i see it is like if, even if right now you are still thinking about it and still messing you up and it's still giving you that sick stomach feeling when think about it then that means there's some work to be done i would say you got um you know that's that's you that's your body telling you you did not stand up for yourself when you were supposed to and it's it's robbing you you robbed yourself of that so it might not be too late as much as you have jared and you have a kid would it be weird to just send text out of the blue or, or say something? Maybe. I mean, this is why this is why in court they have victim impact statements, right? Like, because even though you're not going to get a response and, and this is something else too, just expect, go in there with the expectation that this person is not going to respond to you. You don't want uh, a response. Right? Again, this is about you. Want a response. Exactly. This is, if this is all about you, which it should be, um, this is now your opportunity to tell them that, their actions have consequences and, mm -hmm. and there are consequences to how you treat people. And this is how you made me feel that and that's the whole point of a victim impact statement is, is to get that kind of closure and to get that release. And I think there's definitely something therapeutic in that. And there's definitely something to that. That's going to make you uh, hopefully be able to move on with new relationships in a, in a yeah. healthy way. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. All right. So go write up that text to your ex, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I might. I might. I mean, it's it's a long time coming, but I I might do it. Yeah. And you, and you have nothing to prove. You're in a happy relationship with healthy kids. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It is. Right. It is. It is. It is just just for your own healing. Mm-hmm. 
Great. Right. So I hope that answered all your questions and keep yeah. the questions coming because we, you know, sometimes we get so many questions that we just, we do stuff like this where we just spent an hour just answering them. Answer. Yeah. We'll pick like three or four and we answer them. Yeah. And they were um, all good by the way. So thank yeah. you. They're all great. Awesome. Well, um, have a good rest of the week. We will see you next week. I forgot which episode we're doing next week. Doesn't matter. You guys will see. It's a surprise. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's it. A Huda Media Production.